All right, guys, so we're going to start off by finding SR. If you look on your periodic table, it's number 38, so find it for me. And then the question you ask yourself, remember looking at our flow chart, the first question we always ask ourselves, is it a covalent, ionic, or acidic? So Fritz, what is this? If you look at our little flow chart, cheat sheet, covalence in parentheses, it reminds you that covalents are all nonmetals. So it's going to be ionic. And so over here is pathway. You guys are not going to do this like at home when you're doing this, but I want you to kind of see what the pathway is. So the number one is we determined it's ionic. How do we know it's ionic? Because it has a metal in it. Okay. Then once we're here under ionic, we have two choices. We have group, group one and two with aluminum, zinc, and silver. And then we also have transition metals, but not aluminum, zinc, and silver. So aluminum, zinc, and silver, you guys remember in our periodic table, you guys should have written in charges for those. Their charges are always known. So they get named like group one and two where we know their charges. The transition metals are going to get named differently because we don't know their valencies and we don't know their charges. So strontium is in group two. So it's going to get named under this series right here. So the first thing that it's, oh, so number two, it's a group two metal. So the first thing we do is write the metal cation first, and it gets to keep its whole name. So this is going to be strontium. Part two is change the ending of the non-metal ion to IDE. There is one thing that is different here. So let's draw a little asterisk and go down to here. And put a second one by C. So B and C. You don't change the ending of a polyatomic ion. A nonmetal, so if it's a single element, you change the ending to IDE. If it's a polyatomic ion, polyatomic ions get to keep their name. Okay? So when we're changing the ending to IDE, this is nitrogen. We're going to drop the ogen and turn it into to ide. So nitride. While we're doing these examples, you guys are going to do your turns where you get to try it. So now you try and name this one. AG is like number 47 as you're going through and looking for it. And if you have questions while you're working, feel free to ask, but then we'll go over them and then we'll do the next one. So it'll just be a little series here. Alright, so taking a look at this, tell me what you did, Rolandis. Okay, so why do you have a parenthesis? If we look at our flow chart, it's a group one and two and silver. Yeah, so it does not get a 1 because it is not a transition metal. So it's just silver sulfide. Anybody issues on that one? So it's still ionic in group 2. I saw some people starting to work ahead. Anybody find ZR? 
What number is it? 40. So if you're looking at it, is it covalent, ionic, or acidic? Ionic. And this time, is it in one of the groups we know, or is it a transition metal? It's a transition metal. The only difference between transition metals and regular metals is we have to put a Roman numeral to tell us what the charge is because we do not know its charge by looking at the periodic table. So if we look at this, it's going to keep its name, so it's going to be zirconium. And we're still going to have the sulfide because we're going to change the ending of sulfur to IDE, but we have to have a Roman numeral. The way we get this Roman numeral is by doing algebra. Ionic compounds have to always add up to zero. We don't know zirconium, and we only have one of them. But guess what? We do know sulfur, because sulfur is in one of our families that we know the charge of. So look up sulfur and find its charge. Peter? Two minus or positive? Minus. And so what must zirconium be? Two plus. And so we just put a Roman numeral two in there. So tomorrow, when you guys go to build these, you'll say, you look up zirconium and be like, I don't know it's charred, but it says zirconium 2, and you'll be like, oh, it's a plus 2. And then you can go backwards and build it correctly. You guys try the other one. Yep, Chris? Wait, so why don't we do that for uh, the silver? Because silver is an exception. So group 1 and 2 and aluminum, zinc, and silver. Aluminum, zinc, and cereal are on your periodic table. You should have charges on those. Aluminum a plus 3, zinc a plus 2, silver a plus 1. Um, if you guys look on your periodic table, an easy way to remember these, because you're going to have to memorize them, is if you find aluminum, aluminum is in group 3, which we pretty much always say group 3 is a positive 3, right? So aluminum is a plus 3, then it goes zinc, then it goes silver, so it goes 3, 2, 1. So this is a plus 3, plus 2, plus 1, so 3, 2, 1. You guys, I am videotaping this today, and I'll put it on SharePoint as long as it works. I tried to videotape the other day, and it didn't work. So if you want to go back and listen to me talk, which I know you love, you could. Or if you have a friend who's absent, they can do that as well. But um, You guys are trying this one, right? So taking a look at this one, odd numbers you get. <laughs> nice. Tell us how you got the four. Yeah. So if we do our little algebra x only has one, we only have one x, and then we have a minus two because there are two there, and so we have manganese four oxide. And oxygen, its name got changed, but manganese gets to keep his name. Yep, Sven? Roman numerals are always positive because it's always about the metal that's written first, and all of our metals give away electrons. Tommy? If you were to write it in a line, it would be after the manganese. But I didn't have a lot of room there. So the, no, the Roman numeral 4 belongs to the manganese, but it's not like attached to it or anything. Okay, next one. Find phosphorus, which is 15, oxygen, which is 8. Kelly, what's the first question we always ask ourselves? Yeah, so is it covalent, ionic, or acidic? Which one is it? It's covalent, okay? 
So this is our first covalent over here. And when naming covalents, it's easy, super easy. You're going to use Greek prefixes to indicate the number of each element, except we don't use mono on the first element. So the first guy gets to keep his name but might have a prefix, and the second guy, you change the ending to IDE just like we do with the other ones, except they'll have a prefix as well. Here are our prefixes. You're going to have to memorize those, but they're pretty common, so you should be able to know 1 through 10. And then we're going to do one more thing, which is drop the last vowel if the second element begins with a vowel. So you guys notice the parentheses of that O. That means you do put that O if there isn't another vowel on the other side. But otherwise, you drop that vowel. So let's take a look at this. So here is phosphorus. It gets to keep his name. And if there's only one of them, we would name it mono phosphorus. But here it says the first element does not get a mono. So we just write phosphorus. Four, what's the prefix for four? Tet or tetra, whatever. So oxygen, it changes its ending to ID, so it becomes oxide. And you would put tetra in, but since it's a double vowel, we're going to drop that last A, and it's going to be just tetroxide. So you don't, don't double vowel unless it's di or tri. Di or tri gets to double vowel, but our A's and O's do not double vowel. So you guys try the other one. All right, what'd you come up with this one, Neha? Okay. Dichlorine, good. Some kids like to change this to dichloride. It only goes to ide if it's the second element. It gets its ending changed. And yes, the first element gets all prefixes except for mono. So dichlorine, good. And then the last guy? Except for how many oxygens do we have? Oh, there's only one. Well, mono only doesn't happen on the first element. Mono. Yes. And you only put one O in there, you drop the O from the mono. So it'll be dichlorine monoxide. Okay. All right. Yes, Dana. No. So if you look over here, so here's our new polyatomics, and you guys, if you look on the back of your periodic table, that's where you'll find the names of these polyatomics. So this polyatomic ion nitrate, if you guys find it, has a charge of a minus one. I needed that two, which we're going to go into tomorrow, because barium is in group two, so I needed two of these things. And you don't, some kids want to make it like N2O6. You just created something new. Instead of saying, I have two NO3s, you've created like this new thing. So to say you have multiples of a polyatomic ion, we use parentheses. Over here, we didn't need a multiple because the charge is added up okay. So sometimes you'll have parentheses, sometimes you won't. All right, BA with a polyatomic ion. You guys, here's a clue. If you have a polyatomic ion, notice that word ion, what do you think it's going to be? Ionic. Okay, so you can also double check because this is a metal, bonded to nonmetals, but it has a polyatomic ion in it, it's ionic. So when we go to name this, the first guy gets to keep its name. But then this is where, remember I told you to put the little asterisk about the polyatomic ion. 
we don't change the ending of the poly, you know, say how it says change the ending to ID, we do not change the ending of the polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ion keeps its name, so it's going to be nitrate. If I were to change it to nitride, that would be about the element. And I'm not talking about the element, I'm talking about NO3. So here we have ionic and we have group two and we have a polyatomic ion. You guys try this next one. Make sure you start from scratch following the flowchart. So you will not have this on the test. This is, oh, the polyatomic ions, yes. You will have the, um, the same periodic table you see now will just be laminated and, yeah. You will not be able to write on the periodic table for the second test. So you just were able to do that for the periodic table test. Okay, so ionic, covalent, or acidic? Ionic. Groups or transition? Transition, yes. And it has a poly. So how did you name this, Tom? Okay, hold on, hold on. The mono part goes with what kind of things? Those prefixes go with ionics, covalence, or acidics. Look at your little flow chart. First column says covalence, use prefixes. So can we have a prefix here if this is ionic? No. So you guys follow this flow chart every time, follow it. So we've got ionic, and right now we are in transition metals, and so the metal cation get written first. What do we need? We need a Roman numeral. And how do we find out that Roman numeral? We have to use the ending. If it's a polyatomic ion, in the end, we need to look up our polyatomic ion. It gets to keep its name, so it's going to be sulfate. But you need to look up its charge. What's your charge on sulfate? Negative two. This is just one sulfate ion, even though there's a four there, because SO4 is a sulfate ion, it doesn't change anything. This has to add up to zero, so what's copper's charge? Two, so this should be copper two sulfate. Any questions on that? Okay, let's try the last one down here. Covalent, ionic, or acidic? Acidic. acidic starts with hydrogen. So then look down at the bottom of our flow chart. The next question we ask ourselves is does it contain oxygen? Yes. If it contains oxygen, then we have a polyatomic ion. And there's two kinds of polyatomic ions, and we're going to name them differently. There's polyatomics that end in eight, and there's polyatomics that end in eight. So you have to look up the name of this polyatomic ion. So find it for me. What is this polyatomic ion? Nitrite. If you look on here, we are going to drop the ending ite and change it into an us. Okay, so it's going to become nitrous, and then we add the word acid. 
So when we looked at this, this is an acid with oxygen, and it ended in ite. If you would have had your nitrate, like we had up here, the eight would have turned into an ick, so we would have had nitric acid. Some kids remember this by saying they ate something icky, or eights and icks going together on their acids. Yes? So the hydrogen is The hydrogen is not named in acids, but there is a part where it's kind of named, and that's going to be if you don't have oxygen. So in our second one here where we don't have oxygen, you're going to have a hydro, not hydrogen, but a hydro in the beginning, and that's going to tell you, because if you look at this, there's sulfuric acid. If it was just named that, it would be the same as the polyatomic ion sulfuric acid. Yeah. So the hydro in the front lets you know that it doesn't have a polyatomic ion in it, or pretty much there's one polyatomic ion that doesn't have oxygen in it that we named this way. But um, so Yes. Yes, so it goes to us, eight goes to ick, and in this one, we have we start with hydro, so it's going to be hydro, and then brom. This is a bromide ion or bromine. It's going to go get an ick at the end, so it's still going to have an ick, but it's not because it's a polyatomic ion. So this one's going to have the hydro ick. So why did we do this? It's because it's an acid, no oxygen, and so how do we name that? We do hydro, drop the ending of our bromine to ick, and then add acid. Chris. So if we look at our flow chart, like there's like blanks here. So it's hydro blank ick acid. Yeah, and this one, when you have an eight and ick, it's going to be blank ick acid. And then the ite to us, it's going to be blank us acid, yeah. Okay? Acids are the ones that most kids like don't put the time and effort into because it's there, but there are three, three for acids that you have to, to do individually, to do separately. Okay. So now you guys are going to have them all mixed up, and you're going to practice using the flowchart. So that's what page four is all about. So you're going to start doing that in class. Near the end of class, I'm going to put up the answers so far, so like the first 10-ish you'll probably get through. So you can check to see how you're doing, and you can ask me questions, and then you can continue doing the rest for homework. If it's more, you have 